This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good Sunday morning. Thanks for getting up with us this morning. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, we hear from Oregon's governor. Tina Kotek talks about the controversy surrounding Oregon's Secretary of State this weekend. Plus, a big move for the Northwest Children's Theater. What a new home in downtown Portland means for everyone involved. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a quick look at the forecast. Chris, let's check this out behind me. Beautiful view from our uh, camera atop Oregon's veterans home in the Dalles east end of the gorge. The camera pointed west towards Mount Hood and of course, a little bit of a cloud cap coming in. A lot of us waking up to cloud cover moving in. The Wells Fargo Sky Camera certainly backing that up. You can kind of see the base of Mount Hood there and a little sliver of daylight on the horizon. The sun up uh, occurring right now. Meanwhile, along the Oregon coast, a live look from our Chinook Winds Casino Resort Camera in Lincoln City. Uh, certainly cloud cover, even a little drizzle right now at the coast. So as we check out the satellite imagery again, cloud cover sweeping in. It is possible that we squeeze out a little sprinkle or two, especially at the coast this morning. 52 Hillsborough, 52 Portland, King City waking up to 51 degrees and the big picture across the state this morning. 50s at the coast, 40s and 50s generally across uh, portions of central and eastern Oregon. The coldest numbers on the map right now getting out from Baker County right now, Baker City at 37. All right, the plan for today because we were taking too many complaints about the heat. We're done with the 80s. <laughs> We've got clouds. We may even squeeze out a little drizzle this morning. We'll call it mostly cloudy this afternoon with daytime highs in the mid 60s. Tim. All right, Chris, we'll talk to you soon. Well, we start this half hour with the latest on Oregon Secretary of State Shamia Fagan. Governor Tina Kotek was in Multnomah County on Saturday and addressed the situation. Fagan came under fire uh, for her side job consulting for a troubled marijuana dispensary. Art Edwards has the latest on what the governor, governor had to say. Today, Governor Tina Kotek talked about Secretary of State Shamia Fagan and her consulting work for a troubled cannabis company during a press conference in Portland. She was in Multnomah County as part of her One Oregon tour. I'm certainly very dismayed by the press reports about um, what's been going on with the Secretary of State and um, her relationship with um, her outside work. Fagan has confirmed her consulting work for the owners of Lamota. As first reported by Willamette Week, Fagan started working for the owners of Lamota in February. Court records indicate the company and associated businesses have racked up millions of dollars in unpaid taxes and have been sued repeatedly for not paying their bills. The owners have made large donations to top Democrats, including Fagan. Governor Kotek talked with Fagan on Friday. I um, let her know that I was concerned by the news reports. Fagan didn't publicly say that she had the side job until April when pushed by a reporter. As Secretary of State, she oversees all state audits. That includes an audit of Oregon's regulations on the cannabis industry. The audit director said on Friday that Fagan recused herself from involvement in the audit after taking the job with Lamoda. The governor has asked the Oregon Government Ethics Commission to investigate the situation. She also asked the Oregon Department of Justice to examine the audit. I want to make sure that when we read that audit, we are confident those results are based on good auditing practices and looking at performance. Prior to taking the consulting job, Fagan reached out to a state ethics investigator asking for clarity on conflicts of interest. Oregon law bars public officials from using their positions for personal gain. The governor said it is safest to have a strong firewall between work that's in your office and what you do personally. I don't have outside employment. I only have one job. And so I can't speak to what anybody else does. Art Edwards, KGW News. Well, one person is hurt following this fire in an apartment complex in Northeast Portland. The fire broke out around 315 Saturday afternoon in Northeast Knott Street. Portland Fire and Rescue tweeted they found heavy fire up in the attic and said one firefighter was hurt with a minor burn was taken to the hospital. No word on their condition or how that fire got started. Well, up in Washington, much needed financial help from the state will be going to nonprofit groups serving victims of sexual assault and domestic violence. Funds in the newly approved uh, state budget will help supplement funding lost from federal cuts. We're incredibly grateful that there's some additional funding in the budget. We know that there's still more work to do, but we're so grateful for the legislature stepping up and investing in these critical services. 
Groups had requested a total of $132 million in the state budget for the next two years, but ended up with $50.8 million. We're told the state funds provide a short-term fix, while the groups look for long-term solutions. In downtown Portland, the Northwest Children's Theater has a new home. It is right across the street from the Schnitz, in fact. And as Alma McCarty found out, it's not just a new space, but a new opportunity for performers to showcase their talents. Even on a sunny day, downtown Portland's reputation is often cast in a negative light. But while some may be moving out, others are moving in. This has been many years in the making and we're so excited to be here. Shining a spotlight on the good in downtown, a new children's theater taking center stage. The Judy Kafori Center for Youth Arts Today Northwest Children's Theater has been a pillar of the community for 30 years. Our old home was in Northwest Portland, and we are so excited to be bringing this new space downtown Portland for kids and families of all ages. Known as the Judy, Rachel Brown explains the new location has a lot to offer. In addition to our main stage shows where kids can see some of their favorite children's books come to life, we also have classes and camps where kids can experience theater for themselves. When I come to see it again? I heard there's Cinderella coming up. You want to go see Cinderella? Cecilia Cruz and mom Hannah attended a sold out show alongside dozens of other families. I mean the previous location was great but just a little far away and now you're just kind of downtown in the center of it and really nice theater and black box and studios, classes. We're going to be back this summer. An open house Saturday helped drum up excitement for what's to come, for audiences and performers alike. I started doing things at NWCT when I was seven or around there. Um, I took like my first ever acting class at NWCT and it was so much fun. It was a really good introduction to theater and I love the community here. Maxine Nuesa is taking part in the upcoming show Cinderella. I'm playing one of the evil stepsisters. Um, her name is Patrice. I get to do a bunch of silly things on stage. We have, a whole, we have a whole like duet and everything and it's super fun. She believes the multi-venue arts center will lead to bigger and better things for children interested in all things theater in and around Portland. And it's so cool like being here and also looking at the other signs and shows that are also happening around the area. I think it just shows that like um, people who go to NWCT might even be a part of something bigger one day. Alma McCarty, KGW News. I think she's right. Well, people came out to Northeast Portland on Saturday, not just for the warm weather, but to celebrate a part of Asian culture that isn't always showcased. We'll take a look at the annual New Year in the Park event. It celebrates Southeast Asian New Year, which generally follows the Buddhist calendar, and it includes countries like Cambodia and Myanmar. This happens every year on the last Saturday in April. Organizers say they're glad to be a voice for a part of Portland's diverse community. It's about representation, right? So you hear of other New Year's, but you don't really hear of Southeast Asian New Year. So we want to be able to represent, we want to show out, and we want people to know our culture and our history. Well, people also got to enjoy some great cultural dance performances on the stage and a chance to buy some products inspired by Southeast Asia as well. well truckloads of bikes arrived in West Lynn in preparation to be donated to kids in need. People were able to drop off the gently used and refurbished bikes at 21 Providence Health Clinics before they were sent to the warehouse for distribution. About 750 bikes were collected in all. Well, a city-backed program is helping local businesses find temporary workers. Coming up next, why owners say this program is helping them not only stay in business, but thrive. Hey, and did you know you can watch Sunrise anytime you want? Right there on KGW+. Plus. All of our news is on Roku and Amazon Fire now. So just look for the KGW Plus app and add it to your home screen and stream Sunrise on your schedule.